the COP process has failed. After nearly 30 years, negotiations between nations have been unable and unwilling to deliver an adequate plan to keep global warming below 1.5 degrees. In fact, we are headed for much worse. The future of life on Earth hangs in the balance. For 30 years, you have been lied to. We all have. And we have been lying to ourselves. It's clear that we can no longer rely on our leaders to keep us safe. But there is another way. The truth is worse than anyone could imagine. Our oceans are dying. Our air is poisoning our children and heating our planet to dangerous levels. On land, our soils are degrading while nature is in rapid decline. Extreme weather is destroying communities and climate-induced famine has already begun in Madagascar. We have lost so much already. And with the warming that is already locked in, further humanitarian impacts are now inevitable. There is still so much we can save, but the truth is there are no easy options left. We have left it so late that to transition to a sustainable world will require a mobilization of labor and resources on a scale not seen since the Second World War. A shift to the economy so large that no government or world leader would ever consider proposing it, even if they wanted to. So that is why instead of real action, we get distant targets that won't be met. 10 point plans and flashy green initiatives that are quietly canceled and a reliance on future silver bullet technologies that allow them to offload the problem onto younger generations. We are in an unprecedented situation and one that our political system both created and is unable to deal with. If we want to survive into the next century, then our only option is to change that system. But what would that look like? We need a political system that isn't beholden to short-term thinking or corrupted by fossil fuel interests. One that's inclusive and fair, not divided by tribalism, but able to bring the country together. To do this, we must put ordinary citizens at the heart of our democracy to make the tough decisions that our government is unable or unwilling to make, and to do so free from the corruption of Westminster. This is the vision that Extinction Rebellion was founded on and why we are demanding that the government create a citizens' assembly on the climate and ecological crisis. Those that control the levers of power from the government to the wealthy elites will not relinquish their power so readily. As the abolitionist Frederick Douglass said, power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did and it never will. History has shown us that time and time again, one method has consistently been able to deliver meaningful societal change. When millions of people come together to demand change, governments have no choice but to act. This is what's needed now, as the fallout from COP26 begins. We must take a stand, we must rise up, we must go into resistance. No more marches, no more polite protest. Let's do what works. Prolonged, disruptive, non-violent civil resistance. That's why in 2022, Extinction Rebellion is planning to create the largest act of civil resistance in UK history. But we need your help. If you've been watching the COP fail and don't know what to do about it, then help us build this movement. There is so much to do. Whoever you are, there's a role waiting for you. We're a diverse movement where everyone is welcome and everyone is needed. We have to stop waiting for our leaders to come and save us. Change is not going to come from inside conference rooms, but from ordinary people like you and me. See you on the streets. <laughs>